Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Jinzo here. I'm so pleased to see all of you back here again. Today's video will be named Stories on Ice Frog. Now, I'm sure many of you are wondering, how does this video differ from the history of Ice Frog? Well, in that video, I try to recreate certain events in chronological order. In fact, after I had finished the video, I said to myself, now that the video is done, we can move on to another topic. So this video was in fact supposed to be on the history of competitive Dota, which many viewers wanted and had requested. But from the overwhelmingly positive responses I received from the Dota 2 Reddit community, and also the many comments that you guys left on various videos, it was apparent to me that my previous video was incomplete. Too many questions were left unanswered, and I thought it would be a shame to just leave the video at that and move on to a different topic altogether. So with that in mind, I have compiled together stories on Ice Frog in a non-chronological fashion. This compilation will include interesting trivia and facts about Ice Frog, and also various opinions and experiences from certain individuals as we'll be discussing during the remainder of this video. So I'll start by talking about Ice Frog's Weibo. If you remember from my last video, that's the Chinese equivalent of Twitter. So these comments were made by Ice Frog himself, so I suppose we can probably take them at face value. If we now go back to Ice Frog's original comments from when he first made his account back in 2011, after the infamous cat incident we had back in Playdota.com, Ice Frog posts, of course translated, I often try to learn Chinese, but it's very hard. I often get things wrong. I'm currently using a dictionary to study with the help of some friends. Now, as a Chinese speaker myself, I have to admit that Ice Frog's Chinese is actually very impressive. Chinese as a second language is very difficult to learn, and although we're not sure how long he's been learning Chinese for, he's able to string together grammatically correct Chinese sentences. So I suppose that alone is quite admirable. Many viewers had watched the last video and asked, is Ice Frog Chinese? Unfortunately, as impressive as Ice Frog's writing skills are, by analyzing his posts on this website, it's hard for me to be convinced that he could be ethnically Chinese. Around the 15th of June of 2011, just two weeks after making his Weibo account, Icefrog returns again with another cat. He asks the question, which is actually very predictable. Recently, I've started to raise a new kitty, but for a while I haven't been able to give him a name. What does everyone think I should name him? Here is a photo. And eventually, he ended up naming this cat Nova. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm translating in a slightly segmented fashion, it's because of the way Ice Frog is writing in Chinese, probably due to the fact that he was still learning at this point. Very much like the Western audience, many Chinese users have also requested Ice Frog's photo. So, in 2012, on the 15th of November, Zhang Ping asks Ice Frog, Ice Frog, please show us your face. To which he replies, sure, and this is what we are given. Just two more quick facts about Ice Frog from Weibo before we move on. I had always wondered what the motivation was for Ice Frog to learn Chinese. We expect that it's partially to do with the fact that he wanted to communicate effectively with his Chinese audience. But he could have just hired a Chinese translator and it would have been straightforward. I believe the real reason is here. Ice Frog posts fairly recently in 2014 on the 30th of January. My girlfriend has decorated my room and also has given me money for the new year. She also told me to put this money under my pillow, but why do I need to put it under the pillow? So there's undeniable evidence here that his girlfriend is Chinese and may have been the original motive for him to spend so long learning the language. And even today in Dota 2, we still celebrate the Chinese New Year within the game, or otherwise known as the Spring Festival. And on this particular red packet of ice frogs, as seen in the photo, it translates approximately to blessing or good fortune. So the last piece of trivia I'll be showing you from Ice Frog's Weibo is his obsession with mangoes. Here he posts, mangoes are my favorite fruit. Chinese mangoes are so much nicer than American mangoes. 
I won't be showing you more screen captures of Ice Frog's mango obsession, but there are at least 5 to 10 more independent posts where Ice Frog talks about his love for mangoes in more detail. If you want to have a look at them, just click on the video link description below. His Weibo is public anyway, and you can see how Ice Frog shares his passion and love for mangoes with the world. Not only that, but if you have a look at the enchanted mango item within Dota 2, the flavor text reads, The bittersweet flavors of Jiddy Isle are irresistible to amphibians, which is almost certainly a reference to Ice Frog himself. And if you're wondering where Jiddy Isle is, it's not a place in the real world, but rather an island in Dota 2, known for its dangerous acid jungles. Highly venomous life forms have evolved on the island, including toxic vines, and poisonous reptiles, and this is where Venomancer comes from. We are now going to move on to the next part of this video on the truth about Ice Frog. Now this blog is very easy to find, all you have to do is throw a Google search. So it reads the truth. I am an employee at Valve. I do work on an unrelated project from Ice Frog, but I have many friends who work with him on a daily basis. This blog is the culmination of what I have learned about Ice Frog directly from people who are currently working with him. Their names will stay anonymous for their sake and mine. You might want to ask why I am posting this. Why do I risk me and my friends' jobs? The answer is that ever since Ice Frog has joined Valve, he has been poisonous to the company. He is incredibly hard to work with almost impossible to talk to in person due to a complete lack of social skills and easily holds the most unpleasantly domineering work personality of anyone I have ever met. This is not just my opinion, but the opinion of almost everyone I know who has come in contact with him. Ice Frog's project is not only becoming one of the most controversial inside the office, but one of the most controversial outside. He is taking the company in a direction I thought we would never head in because he demanded unparalleled control and for some reason was granted it. Now you see, I didn't actually want to take this blog seriously, because all it does is makes personal attacks on Ice Frog without any evidence to back it up with. That is, well, until I read Palish's comment in the Dota 2 Reddit. According to Palish, he worked at S2 Games for some period of time. So, in Palish's words, Ice Frog was directly involved with S2 from the very beginning of the Hon project. In fact, either S2 expressed interest at the idea and Ice Frog jumped at the opportunity, or Ice Frog actually approached S2, I think it was the former. At the time, Ice Frog was touring various potential game dev shops and was having no luck, which is why S2 seemed like the best way to make a Dota 2 reality. But Ice Frog was not at all confident in S2's ability to execute, with excellent reason, look at what happened, which is why everything turned out the way it did. It's very lucky for all of us that Valve and Ice Frog managed to get together. I know, I was there. Just a quick reminder that if you're skeptical about the verification details, you can always look at the original post yourself in the link within the video description. It doesn't quite end there though. Palish posts on Reddit just a few days ago in response to my previous video, The History of Ice Frog. He responds to the comment, Are you buying into the narrative of Ice Frog Truth Blogspot? It is speaking half-truths, but the main purpose of that blog is to slander. To which Palish responds with, That blog is from a disgruntled Valve employee, but it's factually correct. Slander is a label for lies. Here's the proof for now, you can choose to believe this or not. Reread the blog, pay particular attention to the part where it's talking about Ice Frog being an employee of S2 Games, and the method that proves this. This method no longer works today, I'm frustrated I never grabbed a screenshot of it, but if it didn't work at the time, that would have been the first thing everyone called out, right? So that's how you can prove to yourself that it worked. That's hard evidence to back up what they're saying. Take it for what you will. Now, that said, I completely disagree with the blog post. I think it's dumb and overly idealistic to say that Valve shouldn't make Dota 2 just because he was involved with S2 games, but that doesn't make the blog post any less accurate. However, I do think Palish has been a bit vague in his response. Does he mean to say that it's in fact true that Ice Frog did indeed work for S2 Games? Which, as I've described in some detail in my previous video on the history of Ice Frog, that he was only interested in making a carbon clone of those All Stars and anything less would not do. So I'm not sure why this is an issue that Ice Frog tried to approach S2 or Blizzard for that matter. Speaking of Blizzard, I think it's more or less confirmed that Ice Frog did indeed approach them with the Dota concept. 
Here is the voice of Rob Pardo, who was the executive creative officer at Blizzard Entertainment. It starts at 1 hour 36 for viewers who want to listen to this themselves outside of this video. So anyway, Rob Pardo, ladies and gentlemen. Why was there not a Blizzard MOBA? started back then i mean honestly it's just development bandwidth yeah i mean like you said we were aware of it we yeah. knew it was getting really popular um you know i actually did have a kind of an official sit down meeting with the other kind of execs of the studio and said hey we should really talk about this and we we also actually brought ice frog out and talked to him a bit too but, uh -huh. and we just um you know made the decision that we just didn't feel like we could take it on and make it successful at the time the timing was pretty bad yeah. in the sense that you guys were still dealing with World of Warcraft and had yeah. you know been starting the, the next versions of your you know yeah, huge Star other Starcraft two was yeah. already a couple years down the path. Yeah, you know, Diablo three was yeah, and that was another thing that was getting ready to happen too. We were yeah. ready to bring Diablo three down to Irvine, and it just didn't feel like at that time we could you know do a Blizzard job on a Dota game. Yeah, it would be a major risk. Yeah, All right. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Blizzard's take on Dota back then. So I'm just going to go back and read through the rest of the Ice Frog blog. What is most interesting about Ice Frog is that he is a compulsive liar. When he was hired, none of us knew about his past. In fact, we were all on the assumption that he had made it thus far on his own. Several of us silently questioned how he could have devoted so much time after graduation to a hobby despite there being a giant hole on his resume, but we knew that he was an eccentric character and assumed that he was being supported by his family. It was not until Riot's game's Steve Mescon, also known as Pendragon, made his infamous blog post on Dota All-Stars that the truth began to come out. Everyone here assumed it was a very dirty marketing scheme by the Riot Games guys, or even that S2 Games and Riot Games were making up stories to discredit us. In fact, our legal team had previously sent infringement notifications to S2 Games over their usage of what we believed to be Ice Frog's content. I was told that S2 Games was asked to remove all Dota content altogether, and because of this, we would have the rights to Dota content. From reading this, I suppose I'll just leave it to the viewer's opinion whether or not this blog is true. But this video would not be good enough if I didn't leave you all more food for thought. I introduced to you all, ladies and gentlemen, one of the original members of Clan TDA. He worked under Ginsu, Pendragon, Nakus, and also Ice Frog himself. Not only that, but he was responsible for many of the Dota heroes such as Tidehunter, Spiritbreaker, Phantom Lancer, Bloodseeker, Enigma, and many, many more. In addition, he was responsible for writing a lot of the lore for many of Dota heroes and items as well, such as the Hand of Midas and Orchid Malevolence. I introduced to you all Terrorblaze, ladies and gentlemen. He verified his status by screen sharing his AIM logon username, which is more than good enough for me. And in view of this, I interviewed Terrorblaze, asking him on his opinions on various Dota aspects and his personal involvement in the development of Dota All-Stars throughout the years. I'll be releasing his interview in the subsequent videos to come, so please stay tuned for that. But don't worry, here I'll be releasing a short teaser. So Terrorblaze, do you think there is some truth in what the blog has to say about Icefrog's personality, and what is your personal opinion of Icefrog after working with him for such a long period? He always treat everybody he talked to that I recall back in the days of development that I was a part of, he was fairly sociable. I mean, I don't know how he met Nykus initially. Nykus was the one who recruited him. I mean, if Nykus never had anything bad to say about him personality-wise, then I certainly wouldn't either, because as far as every conversation I ever had with him, he was always very, very polite. Uh, he never lashed out. He never said anything that I would consider to be unprofessional or uncouth, and he never backst <laughs> backstabbed anybody or did anything like that. As Maybe people change, maybe they don't. I can't really speak to it. As far as I knew him, he was a pretty stand-up guy. So it sounds like Ice Frog is not the type of individual as described in the blog post. If that's the case, do you have any idea why somebody would write such a thing? I think I think there's a I think there's a bit of a vendetta there. It's definitely uh, looking through uh, a different colored glass, so to speak. It's very hard, and obviously the information is very hard to verify one way or another. My personal experience tells me that he's a pretty nice guy who wouldn't do any <laughs> of what that blog post alluded to. Others may have had a different experience, and unless more people come to the witness stand, so to speak, and you know, talk about their experiences with him, I guess we'll never really know. 
And that unfortunately is the end of the teaser, ladies and gentlemen. But I think Terrorblaze sums it up very well and that is probably how we should view Ice Frog until we see further evidence. And with that bombshell, this is all we have time for, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you liked this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. Stay tuned for the full version of Terrorblaze's interview which will be popping up in the next upcoming weeks. Remember, if you have any questions to ask me, feel free to drop by in the Discord chat to ask me questions live in person, or alternatively, message me at tzjinzo on Instagram slash Twitter. Thank you very much for your time, and until the next video, Jinzo out.